Welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, the latest on shares, markets and investments, now available on your Amazon Alexa. Hello and welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, now also available on the UK Investor Magazine mobile app. For today's podcast, we're going to be delving into a particularly interesting subject, one of the hottest themes out there in markets at this point in time, and it's AI infrastructure. But we're going to be looking at it from quite an interesting perspective. And we're going to be looking at the critical minerals used in AI infrastructure and what it means for the market going forward. But we're going to be doing that in the context of Majestic Corporation, an Aquis listed company, specialist recycler. It deals with copper waste, particularly that's going to be a big subject for today's conversation. It also takes quite a lot of offtake from data centers. And we're going to be bringing that all together, joining the dots, as well as looking at the other critical minerals within Majestic Corporation's business model. And to do that, we're very kindly joined today once more by Crystal Lai, who is the head of communications at Majestic Corporation. Crystal, very much welcoming you back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Chris, we have done a couple of uh, podcasts together so far this year on differing topics. This one is particularly pertinent uh, given what's happening out there with AI and the strong growth that we're seeing within the industry. But before we get started, please, would you be able to give us an introduction, first of all, to yourself, as well as Majestic Corporation, for those that may not have caught one of our prior podcasts, please? Yeah, sure. So... My name is Crystal Lay and I'm the Head of Communications at Majestic Corp. We were founded in 2018 and listed on the Aquis Stock Exchange in 2022 and more recently on the OTC markets in the US. We're an urban miner and what that means is we recover valuable metals like copper, gold, silver and palladium from products and infrastructure that already exist in our world rather than digging them out from the ground. We collect this material from you know, discarded le- electronics, circuit boards, telecom equipment, solar materials, batteries. We process it and then we re-inject it back into the global supply chains. Now we're on track to process 100,000 tonnes of material by 2030, uh, supported by operations and partnerships across eight countries. The topic of discussion today is going to be data centres, the waste from data centres and the supply of materials to new data centres, of course, There's a huge demand for AI compute, and that's being met by fresh data centers around the world. There's billions and billions of dollars being poured in by some of the world's largest hyperscalers. And we're going to frame this conversation around the critical minerals required to power that. But of course, Crystal, there's been quite a lot of discussion. One of the key points is discussing the power required for AI infrastructure. But could we start with looking at the specific metals that are required for data centers and the GPUs that go into them? Yeah, sure. So it's an end of life recycling problem as well as a front end uh, supply problem. And I'll get into that a bit more uh, later on. But at the chip and board level, you've got, you know, copper everywhere. Uh, You've got gold and silver in the connectors, bonding wires, uh, contact surfaces. You've got palladium and other PGMs in the capacitors and high end electronic components. Structurally, you've got aluminium and stainless steel. And that's before you even get to the wider data center. So from Majestic's point of view, that's all rich in metal bearing material that eventually has to be retired, dismantled and recycled. So that's the end of life recycling problem, which I touched on earlier. But like I said, it's a very much a front end supply problem. If you look at those metals that go into these components, we're not talking about, you know, hypothetical issues, but we're talking about materials that our world is really struggling to supply enough of. And of course, mining isn't keeping up. So that's exactly the gap companies like Majestic are working to fill. That's a really interesting point there, that there's already a gap out there, uh, you know, particularly in you know some of the forecasts that you're looking at, you know, some of the critical minerals. Copper, for example, is one that always jumps to mind. But when we're looking forward, Crystal, and then we take into consideration the requirements for AI through data centers and, and GPUs, just how much of an impact is this going to have? Is this going to make any supply deficits worse? Yeah, for sure. So I'll give you some quick examples. If we look at copper, which is the backbone, you know, like you said, it's the first metal that comes to mind, right? If you look at copper, which is the backbone of GPUs, power delivery, uh, cabling, data center, infrastructure, analysts now 
suspect that AI and data centers alone could be consuming between 330,000 to 420,000 tonnes per year by 2030. Now, some forecasts go you know, even beyond that. But the key point, and this links back to what we talked about earlier, is that the supply side simply isn't scaling at that pace. New mines take about you know, 10, 15 years to come online. ESG requirements are tightening. Um, geopolitical friction is increasing. You know, meanwhile, AI build-out cycles are measured in months. So instead of thinking about this as you know, AI adds a bit of demand, it's more accurate to see it as AI is becoming one of the dominant new drivers of demand for critical metals like copper, like gold, like silver and palladium, all of which are already under immense pressure. And so that's why the structural deficit narrative really matters. And so with that, this is where circular recovery or urban mining plays a crucial role. And we're going to be discussing urban mining in more detail a little bit later on in the podcast. But but one thing that strikes me is that there is some crossover with the power required and the metals that are required to go into power facilities to power AI. But then on one side, as you mentioned at the beginning, of course, there's metals that are required and demanded for building out the actual structures Uh, the GPUs, the actual data centres. Do you feel that there's some crossover there which isn't being considered? And do you think there's some bottlenecks that maybe aren't being considered at this point in time? Yeah, so there's a huge amount of crossover. In fact, it's often the same metals doing double duty, if you will. So you've got AI, EVs, renewables and grid expansion all tugging on the same set of metals. And in my view, the bottlenecks are still very much like underappreciated. We talk a lot about power permits and planning, which are real issues, but we talk far less about the time it takes to bring a new mine online versus how quickly AI capacity is being deployed, which is what I touched on earlier. You know, when it comes to talking about AI deployment, we talk in months, you know, but new mines, it's just completely different scales. And so that's why urban mining recovery metals from existing infrastructure and devices is so important. It's faster, it's more sustainable. You brought in there the need for the circular economy in data centres and actually returning some of the waste back into the supply chain. And that's something I want to touch in now and and actually bring in Majestic Corporation. I mean, first of all, the question is here, and I think this would be really interesting for listeners to give them some context. What's the typical life cycle of a GPU, you know, in terms of it going into production and then it becoming worn out and and useless and then leaving that data centre and it having to be replaced. And why is this particularly interesting for MCJ? I think it'd be good for listeners if you could bring in your model, you know, in terms of, you know, the mix of different inputs that you have at this point in time and what a greater number of data centres will actually mean for you in terms of the input into your business model in the form of waste chipboards and GPUs. So to keep it very simple, the GPU life cycle looks something like this. Uh, It's designed, it's manufactured, it's shipped to an OEM or integrator. It's then deployed into a server or a server in a hyperscale or enterprise data centre. It's run extremely hard for several years and then eventually swapped out in a refresh cycle. That's typically every four to six years for high-end AI hardware. So from a recycler's point of view, from Majestic's point of view, that last stage is where things get very interesting. Data center waste tends to be high grade. Boards and components are densely packed with copper, gold, palladium, and other valuable metals. It's relatively homogenous. Uh, so you might receive large volumes of similar server or GPU generations, which makes processing much, much more efficient. It's traceable and it's well documented. So corporate and hyperscale operators usually have asset logs. So you know exactly what material you're handling. So for us, that combination of volume, quality and uh, predictability makes data center end of life streams a very attractive feedstock. I just want to bring together some of the, the points that we've made so far and, and just make it clear here. We've, we've spoke about a number of different metals. 
But if we look at Majestic and your, your business model at the moment in terms of the metals that you recycle, what are the key ones? Of course, we've touched on copper and, and, and gold, but are there any other ones which Majestic recovers and recycle, which are widely used in, in AI infrastructure? And I think maybe a point here to bring in is when you're looking at these particular metals, are you going to see from a, if we're, if we're looking from a, from a bigger picture, do you see some of the other types of materials that you're bringing in eventually finding their way back into the AI infrastructure supply chain and, and what are the key metals? So a few of the core ones uh, include copper like, which we spoke about earlier which are recovered from printed circuit boards, cabling and other power distribution infrastructure. You've got gold and silver, palladium and other uh, PGMs, uh, aluminium and other base metals, nickel but you've also got rare earth elements so when you look at a data center or an AI accelerator stack, a large proportion sits squarely in the categories that we already process uh, every day. If we look at the business now, Majestic's business at this point in time, what does the, the mix look like in terms of the overall proportion of your business, which is currently coming from data center ways? Because of course, data centers aren't, aren't a new thing. It's just that they're being built at a faster rate to meet the demand from AI. And, and do you see this changing going forward? Today, data center linked material, so that's server hardware, networking equipment, uh, telecoms infrastructure, is meaningful, but not yet majority share of our total volumes. So what's changing is the growth rate. The conversations we're having with operators, with OEMs and with intermediaries in that ecosystem are accelerating very quickly, given the build out of AI capacity, given the refresh cycle, which we spoke about, and the regulatory and ESG pressure on traceable and end of life treatment. So we expect the data center and related AI share of our business to grow steadily through the second half of this decade. It's one, I would say, one of the key contributors to our target processing volume of 100,000 tonnes of material annually by 2030. So, of course, there's going to be growing opportunity for Majestic going forward. Are you changing anything? Are there any steps that you're putting in place to capture this opportunity? We're engaging with integrators, uh, refurbishers and even cloud operators, organisations that require secure destruction and certified recycling, which is Majestic's core specialty. There are also a heap of other emerging opportunities that we're pursuing. For example, we're preparing to recover neodymium magnets from cooling systems, a strategically important material for every major economy. Very few recyclers are addressing this space today and we're getting ahead of the curve, partnering with universities, securing government support and establishing leadership early. So we expect meaningful volumes to arrive in our business from 2026 through to 2035 and we're investing now so we're not playing catch up later on. Thank you very much Crystal. Um, so I would just make a note to anybody uh, interested in AI infrastructure and particularly the, the critical minerals element. Do check out the notes to this podcast because there'll be a link through to a report that Majestic Corporation published recently uh, which really goes into the supply chain in a little bit more detail and there's some great visuals in there so if anybody wants to find some more information and learn a little bit more about how majestic fits into the overall ai infrastructure expansion do check out the notes to this podcast so crystal thank you very much for being with us today thank you so much jonathan and thank you very much to everyone for listening we hope you enjoyed listening to the uk investor magazine podcast please do share the podcast and we really value any reviews and comments you leave us in your chosen podcast player the views presented by the hosts and guests of the UK Investor Magazine podcast are in no way investment advice. And please remember, all investment involves risk.